Centennial Park. You have 30 minutes. On July 27, 1996, Eric Rudolph planted the largest pipe bomb that the FBI had ever seen. He said he didn't want to hurt civilians that day, but sometimes the bomb tells a different story. always loved watching the Olympics. You know, rarely do you get to feel like a citizen of the world. The Atlanta Olympics in 1996 were a celebration of cultural diversity, of multiculturalism, of everything that the Olympic spirit means to the rest of the world. And it was the 100th anniversary, and it was on American soil. It was a big deal. In the vicinity of about 10 minutes ago, there was a loud, very concussive explosion that occurred right in the vicinity of the AT&T Global Village. And as far as we know now, from eyewitness accounts, we've got some injuries. Uh, I was told a policeman was hit with shrapnel, and a number of other people in the area here have been hit and are hurt. My sister-in-law called me and said, can you believe they bombed the park? And I was stunned. I turned on the television, and it was a nightmare. We had enough warning to clear the light tower of the personnel that were manning the equipment in the tower. Now what happened was is the security guard noticed an unattended package. His name's Richard. He alerted the policeman. If Richard, the security guard, had not spotted this ahead of time, how many more people would have been in the area, would you guess? There would have been, in the immediate vicinity, 100 to 200 people right there. Yeah, What was it, Mr. Jewell, that first attracted your attention? We had some uh, activity in front of the sound and light tower. The gentlemen were disturbing some of the crowd that was trying to enjoy a concert. There was some kids playing around with a the backpack. They were thinking of robbing it and stealing it, and it was too heavy because it had that huge bomb in it. Once we identified it as a suspicious package, we uh, I didn't get, we didn't, either one of us get too much closer to it. Richard had seen the bomb agent look in the package. He was laying flat on his stomach, and he was undoing the top of the bag with his hand, and he was doing his flashlight like this, and all of a sudden, he just froze. He saw that agent walking almost at a run away from the area. If you see an ATF agent running, you better be in front of him. The bomb was huge. It was massively lethal. It was packed with shrapnel, things to kill hundreds of people if it had been placed properly. So did you start to run too? Mm, no, sir. We were just concerned with getting the people as far away as we could, as quickly as we could. So at a time when he knew it was likely a bomb, did not know when it would explode, Richard Jewell single-handedly went through all five floors and safely evacuated everyone from it. The only thing uh, I wish we could have done was uh, got everybody out of the area. They weren't able to completely clear the area before the bomb went off. Alice Hawthorne was there with her daughter, and she was killed by a nail that hit her in the temple. Two people died, and 111 were wounded. Without Richard Jewell, so many more people could have been killed. Officer Jewell, thank you so much for joining us, and I'm sure heartfelt uh, thank you for many people for your work this morning. Th thank you very much. Richard Jewell was a hero, and unfortunately, everything turned upside down on him. The park security guard, 33-year-old Richard Jewell, is now reported to be a possible suspect. Where were you at uh, 1 o'clock on that second, morning? Please? During the Olympics, the world press was present. There were some leaks to newspapers by FBI agents, and there was a feeding frenzy. Can you stop so we can talk to you? Richard Jewell's dream was to be a big city police officer. I just came down to Atlanta to uh, do the games, and then I'm going to try to get on with an agency here in Atlanta. 
And that unfortunately fit into the profile that the FBI had developed of a hero bomber. Someone who will plant a bomb just to find it and be seen as a hero. It was so unfair to him, but it's the nature of the news cycle. Now that they've identified somebody, everybody's going to run this into the ground, and nobody's going to get the right story for a while here. It's as if they don't stop and realize that what they're writing about is a real person. And when you falsely brand someone, you have ruined their life. It can't be fixed. He is a prisoner in my home. He cannot work. He cannot know any type of normal life. He can only sit and wait for this nightmare to end. Law enforcement was completely wrong about Richard Jewell, and it took a long time to clear his name. This is to advise you that based on the evidence developed to date, your client, Richard Jewell, is not considered a target of the federal criminal investigation into the bombing on July 27. 1996 at Centennial Olympic Park. The FBI's energy and focus on Richard Jewell was a total waste of resources. There was a bomber out there who must have been laughing his butt off. Somebody out there just chuckling that he'd actually done the bombing.